We'll see. Eunice, can you hear us? Okay. Thank you. We we were we we're working on it. Yeah, I think they had it. I think that was on. That was that was us. That wasn't you two. Um. So our next approach is. Um, Tell me when I can try, Eunice. She said she wasn't hearing your piano playing. She was your sound. Uh huh. Yep. We, we system checked the whole thing this week. And so we didn't see any glitches. I'm just talking so Eunice can pick us up. We didn't see any glitches in the system. Well, what, I, what we did was we, rec we, re we re carefully listened to the recording that went out. And in the recording, there's all kinds of distortion that didn't exist in live when we were here last Sunday. And so... Exactly. So it's in the Zoom system that it seems that we're getting the distortion. So. Fine. Yeah. So. Well, I've, I've asked about that. What are other choices? What are other options? And one option is we can upgrade our Zoom to a webinar format rather than a Zoom meeting. And that eliminates a lot of distortion because in the webinar you don't have the same open mic process. It's a we have to. It's a little more expensive, but we're going to try it today and insist that everybody be on mute, even if they think they're being quiet. That that's the problem. That's exactly right. And I so I preset everything so that everybody automatically is on mute. Only if we go to this upgrade. So it's not a lot. It's uh, 150 bucks or something. I mean, it's not terrible. No, 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 no. So, um, so we're going to try it today. Insist but the problem is some people who are on their phones, it's hard for them to find a mute button. If you're on your laptop, it's not a problem at all. Phones are tough. And so we're going to try to insist that not, you know, ask politely that, that, that everybody stays on mute the entire time, even if you think you're being quiet, because it's, the sound is so sensitive. It's picking up, like when we, lis we listened carefully to the recording last week, a door closed. Somebody, and it, was, it was a door jam. You could just very carefully hear. It was weird things like that. Like it was clearly not anybody making noise. It was just the sound picked it up. And then it records it. And when it records it, 
then it mutes everything else. Because Zoom, the algorithm for Zoom is it's trying to figure out which mic is live at the, that right moment. Exactly. And, or if it starts to search. You don't see it when it's searching. You see it when it connects. But the searching causes distortion, too. So we're, at, we're right now in the hypothesis that our Zoom, um, we may need to upgrade our Zoom technology. But we're going to try everybody muted today. And then we'll go from there. But um, um, and we, we, I also apparently, I've heard that there's a software we could, could might try if we needed to, where we could both do live Zoom screening and live Facebook simultaneously. But it's a little trickier because you may because we need another screen to do it, and I'm not sure we're really ready to do that. But the Facebook Live is a little bit less fussy than the Zoom is. But not everybody has Facebook, so we didn't want to block ourselves in. So, right. So I mean, I've been on I've been online with Zoom all week trying to figure out what the best setting and situation would be, and of course we carefully reviewed the recording from last week and we've reset and recalibrated the system so yeah but yes and everybody does it a little differently because we're using this camera system other people are using different systems so it's not it's similar but not the same and so um, that's a you know that's just Everybody's struggling with the technology. And I mean, and some Sundays it works and some Sundays it doesn't. And everybody's having the same conversation. Um, like I said, Facebook seems to be, but when, when Facebook goes down, it's just down. Like you can't do anything. Um, so it's, it's just, um, it's like the technology is good, but not good enough. And the technology was never designed to do worship music. It was, it was designed for meeting. Right. Right. It's impossible. The only thing they can do is record their own version and you just sync them all together then. So that's our, that's the, like, like I said, we're, we're on the cusp of doing, you know, learning new technology as, an, as a, but it's not, I mean, the, the music part of it is hard. We've turned these three mics down low because there was a lot of distortion coming from your these microphones, and we think it may be the heat, the airflow, because those three mics are very sensitive above you guys. Right, and, and so when the heat comes on, we were hearing, I think we were hearing some distortion of the heat, you know, the airflow around those. So, um, you know, we just, we just tried to troubleshoot as best we can. Um, but when you're in the nave, sitting here, it all sounds great. Yes, it all sounds great. It's it's the it's the Zoom. It, when it goes into the Zoom system, is when things get wonky. We did also um, turn down this mic because in in the recording, this went above the recommended decibels, and it was getting. And as soon as it we get distortion, as soon as it goes above that, so it's like all of these subtleties that it's like. I'm going to go back and check on Eunice because she has she's not screaming, so that's a good.
What would you like me to say? Just keep talking? Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. I can't wait for summer. <laughs> Try to one at the altar. No, wait a minute. Let me just turn this on. Testing, testing. Can anyone hear me? Okay, good.
I'm checking the microphones now, Eunice. Can you hear me? Thank you. And it's not distorted? You're not hearing distortion? And you're, you're listening through Zoom? Excellent. Okay. We're making... Good morning, Carol Trumbly. <laughs> Who else is there? Margie and Jerry Hyquist.
even if you are being quiet in your room, and we completely appreciate that, um, when you participate, okay, thank you. I'm getting, I'm getting cues here. Um, so I wanna just talk you through a little bit of the Zoom technology. We've been working hard to improve the sound quality and to improve the recording quality. So we've learned a few things as we've delved into this conversation a little more deeply. It is really important for all of you to stay on mute the whole time we're in worship. Even if you're being quiet in your home or, um, or as you participate um, in the service, if you stay on mute, you will be able to hear us and be able to participate. But any kind of sound or distortion or distraction in your home, we pick up on our end and it impacts the recording and the sound quality because of the, the nuances of Zoom. Our sound here in our building sounds great to us. It's the sound that you're getting on your end that um, seems to be uh, very difficult for many. I also know that when you're on Zoom using your phone, it's a little bit more complicated to manage the mute button and also on your iPad. We, can, we have the ability to keep you on mute here on our end, and we've asked that you please remain on mute. You can have your camera on or not. If you have your camera on, we can see you. If you turn off, and so can others, if you turn off your camera, you can still see us. Those settings only in, impact you and your end, not us. So go ahead and turn off your camera if you'd like. You'll still be able to see and hear us and for sure turn off your sound so that you're on mute and then you'll be able to participate. We're gonna troubleshoot this this week. Hopefully we've improved and um, we're getting uh, the glitches worked out. We have some other options we can uh, upgrade if we need to, to get this resolved. So we're taking it sort of one step at a time to um, come to some clarity. After the worship service, we will have the forum. During the forum, please unmute because you can ask questions and we can have a conversation then. But for the duration of worship, remain on mute. If you have any questions or problems, um, can have, you can absolutely come to church on Sunday morning and stay in the parking lot. We have ushers that will help you. If you're on um, your phone or your iPad, sit in the parking lot and the ushers can help you through that. So we want everybody to feel supported. We want everybody to understand how this technology is working. And most importantly, we want you all to be able to worship with uh, joy and gladness in the way we all intend. I think, um, uh, so we will have the forum after worship today, if you'd like to um, stick around for that. We have sent you the slides, and so you should be able to follow along, even if you don't see the video well. Oh, um, Eunice is telling me from the corner here that if you're having a hard time hearing um, and you're on mute at home, check the volume on your phone or your iPad. Turn up your volume. Our volume is managed through a central um, sound uh, distribution um, location. So please manage your sound on your end. And again, remain on mute. Other questions? Thank you all for your patience. We're learning this together and we're um, making great progress, but we have a little farther to go. And we're looking forward to um, uh, the time when we can all be back together again safely when everybody will be well. So at this point, we're gonna invite the band to begin worship with our prayer.
As we continue through the time of after Epiphany, stories of the call to discipleship show us the implications of our baptismal calling to show Christ in the world. Jesus begins proclaiming the good news and calling people to repentance right after John the Baptist is arrested for preaching in a similar way. Knowing that John was later executed, we see at the very onset the cost of discipleship. Still, the two sets of brothers leave everything they have known and worked for all their lives to follow Jesus and to fish for people. Please join me in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundance of God's grace. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join in reading the psalm appointed for the day. We will read responsively. 62nd chapter of Psalm. For God alone, I wait in silence. Truly, my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the first chapter of Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Before Jesus calls his first disciples, he proclaims a message that becomes known as the Gospel or good news from God. God is ready to rule our lives. Those who realize this will respond with repentance and faith. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the, glory, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon, and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. 
as he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, this is uh, the season of Epiphany, the call of the disciples to follow Jesus. And uh, in according to Mark's story of the call of the disciples, um, Mar Jesus connects this to John the Baptist and understanding that uh, following, to follow Jesus is a commitment of one's life. And one never knows what those commitments and what those uh, costs will be. But the call sure outweighs the risks because the benefit of being a beloved child of God carries us now into the world and throughout all eternity. And so we talk about calling disciples and maybe in, in uh, church language, we talk about evangelism, how it is that we gather the, uh, the followers of Jesus together and how we uh, gather those followers and share our faith stories is a way in which we can see the, the divine grace of God at work in our lives and expansive our invitation to bring more and more people into this wonderful inheritance of becoming a disciple of Jesus. And so when we think about how it is the church grows, it seems to me that understanding the nature of uh, becoming a disciple and how we call one another into this life of Jesus is, is most important under as a part of our own epiphany journey and the growth of faith. So let's talk a minute about that. How does discipleship work? How is it possible for us to share our faith stories as a follower of Jesus, being able to articulate and define how it is that Jesus is active in your life and, in, and makes a difference in your circumstance so that others can see with excitement the opportunity and possibility of being a follower of Jesus and, uh, and want to be a part of responding to God's and the Holy Spirit's call to, to join this community of faith. We all know that it's the Holy Spirit's activity that uh, anoints us as, as followers and disciples, but it's our own testimony that helps um, people understand the joy of being a disciple and opens their hearts to the Holy Spirit's activity. So I guess I'd like to say and tell a little bit about some of my faith experience with an intention of having you reflect on your faith experience, because I think we all have faith stories to share. And the better we get at sharing our stories in large and small ways, directly and indirectly, I think the more contagious this sense of joy and this growth in, in a sense of God's presence among us, it becomes contagious. And uh, people would definitely just want to be a part of the joy in which we've received. Some of you know my father died when I was quite young, and uh, my mom was left um, a widow um, and homeless uh, with three small girls. Uh, my sisters and I, my oldest sister was three, and I was, uh, my other sister was two, and I was just, uh, just a year old when my dad died. My mom was uh, very um, deathly injured in an automobile accident. Uh, she did recover from her injuries eventually, but um, uh, life was very, very hard for her and uh, subsequently for us for some time. And um, one of the things that became very clear for me as a child growing up was that the church, the faith community, which my mom faithfully took us to every week, and because we lived in a rural community where um, uh, people sort of networked around and farms helped each other, uh, we were included in that network of support. Very quickly on, the community came and surrounded my sisters and I and helped my mom to both recover, but also to parent us. And so as a very small uh, child in, in my raising uh, peers, um, I began to understand the incredible value of the whole community being part of my life. 
And on those days that my mom wasn't able to provide or do for me as I wish she would have been able to, there were others at hand, whether that be extended family, whether that be teachers at school, whether that be those, those folks at church, whether it be neighbors um, near and far, I had the sense in which there was a there was a community that supported and surrounded us all of all of the days and that community I began to understand as the community of faith not that everybody believed the same way or went to the same church or you know we had that was that was not the criteria of community the criteria was these were people of God who understood the compassion and empathy for children in need these were people of God who understood a single mom's struggle in, in the ways they could understand and wanted to lend a helping hand. The, this is the community of faith that comes together to support each other, whether we know all of our details of the circumstances or not, in loving compassion to those in need, we respond. I was nurtured in that existence. I, I was raised on a sense of being able to uh, care for others as I as also was being cared for. So there were times my family was able to Christmas carol in people's homes who were left out or forgotten. And, and at the same time, I was able to receive that same kind of uh, blessing and prayer that uh, comes when, when our family needed that support. It was a mutual benefit of giving and receiving, knowing that the people of God were there sustaining and holding me throughout my whole life. That kind of faith that was nurtured in me is the kind of faith that I now rejoice in because I know throughout my whole life without whatever the circumstances and challenges that I or my family face, we are held within the love of the community of faith. Whether that's so many get well cards that you all have sent me, whether it's prayers that have been extended and warm welcomes as I arrive, whatever the circumstance, this mutual sense of holding each other in God's sight is an incredible life force that I have personally benefited from and hope and pray to be able to give to others. Because that's the nature of, of interconnected faith. That's the nature of the Holy Spirit's work, where God's angels give and receive and are blessed over and over again. That's what calls me to, be, to ministry, to nurture communities so that all of us can engage in the upbuilding of the kingdom of God, lifting each other up, holding the communities, caring for one another in times of need. That's the work of God. That's God's mission and God's will for all people that we all thrive, that we all be the best we can be, that we all understand and know the love and forgiveness God offers us when we fall short and when we make mistakes. So it's the community of faith that has nurtured me. It's the community that calls me into discipleship and holds me accountable when I need to be reminded of those commitments. And maybe you have a different faith story. Maybe your faith story is not about community as much as it is about forgiveness or second chances. Maybe your faith story is more about being... Um, being having a near death experiencing and knowing what that is like to sit that close to God's heavenly kingdom. Your everybody's faith story may have a different understanding or nuance. Clearly, John the Baptist's faith story was very different than the sons of Zebedee, this fisherman. We all have a different encounter with God, but we all are rooted in the understanding that it's the Holy Spirit that holds us and calls us and most importantly nourishes us in this capacity to love and care so that we can do the same for others. So when we talk about being a disciple of Jesus, it's not one story, it's not one formula, it's all of our collective experiences that it may be very different. But in the sharing and the telling of those stories, others can feel the gifts that we have already received. Others can see and notice that our lives are free and, and filled with a sense of God's holding and God's peace, and that's contagious. That joy, that peace, that freedom is a gift that we can share with others through our daily life and through our practice and witness. Being called to as a disciple of Jesus is a most abundant blessing. 
And it's also an, an ask. It's an ask to share that then with others so that more may know God's love. Whatever the faith tradition in which they're called into or live into, that's not necessarily the point. The point is this Holy Spirit's gift of abundance is free for all of God's children. And that's what Epiphany brings us to. Epiphany brings us into this experience of growth and invitation and new opportunities. And those new opportunities present themselves in so many different ways. And yet we are encouraged to share them with those in need, the wider world, those in our community, those in our family, those whom we like and those whom we don't like. We are called into relationship through this epiphany blessing of growth. And so I invite you as we look in the next few weeks as to how the church grows during this season of Epiphany as Jesus calls his disciples and gathers this network of mutual community together that we too find our place in that network. We claim our rightful responsibility and our joyful response to being an inheritor of this incredible gift. My life has been changed because the people of God your lives have been changed because of God's Holy Spirit's activity. Find ways to share that good news with others. Find ways to live your life as a reflection of all that God has already done. Knowing that not every day is a good day. Some days are dark and, and, and stormy and, and require us to dig deep to remind ourselves again and again of our baptism. But it's there. It's rooted. It's rooted in the, our baptism. It's rooted in the Holy Spirit's ongoing presence in our lives. And it's rooted in the community. So on those dark days when you are having a hard time finding your joy and peace, reach to another community member and borrow their joy and peace for a time until you reclaim your own. We live on the shoulders of one another. We stand in mutuality. Being a community of disciples means that we can rely on each other in big and small ways. And that's the gift of being part of God's embracing all-inclusive love and knowing that it's ours to share. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We'll now sing the hymn of the day. If you're home, please stay on mute and sing along. If you're... Um, if you're here in, in the space, we'll be humming with a band.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, and for musicians in service, and all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide and care for our earth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofit and non-governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that God inspire all people in the just use of wealth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcast and all who await relief, especially for those that are included in our circle of prayer, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our congregation and community, for families, big and small, and for the organizations that meet here during the week, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Now hear the words of our, our members in the silence of their hearts. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Christ. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The food of God for the people of God. Come, let us feast. 
This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, continue to keep you in God's peace. Amen. Nourished by word and sacrament, we welcome all to share God's love, proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, and serve all people sent to us by the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.